down in the valley, Dolores Rexted. I remember when the soil conservation program was just getting started around here. Dad was all for it. He'd go around with the government men in the evenings to all the little country schools because some farmers wanted to hear about the program. They'd show slides and talk. They brought Dad along because he was not an outsider and he could speak about the program firsthand. Farmers were hard to convince. They weren't too sure about the idea of strips and zigzagging around. They didn't see the need for it. It was the late 30s, early 40s. I was in grade school. I remember when they put in the terraces down here at my uncle's place. People came from all over to see it. I had to talk on the radio one time. I think I was six or seven. I had a little speech they printed out for me telling how my dad used to farm, but now he's doing it in a more efficient way. My husband continued those practices, but these days they don't grow much hay anymore and there's no cattle, so it's all cropped mostly. It bothers me. I guess with prices being what they are, they do what they have to do. Our one-room school, number 111, was very small. 13 students was the most at any one time for eight grades. I loved my little country school. We didn't have any playground equipment at our school until a day in November 1940. My dad and Arnold Hobby, who was a local plumber, arrived and began putting up pipes and hanging swings, and they also made a teeter-totter. They cemented in everything. That morning was so nice. We were watching out the windows, so excited that we were going to have playground equipment. We'd never had any before. At best, we'd just bat ball around. But by 11 o'clock, it had grown real stormy. It's lucky they started that morning because the cement hardened before it got cold. By the end of the day, 27 inches of snow had fallen and there were 12-foot drifts in places. The winds, they say, got up to 80 miles an hour, and the temperature dropped 50 degrees. 49 people died in Minnesota alone. A number of duck hunters were trapped on the river, but a local flyer named Max Conrad braved the blizzard and flew up and down the river, locating the hunters, and they dropped them supplies. It was a terrible tragedy. We didn't know anyone trapped in the storm. I don't miss the hard rain and wind up there on the ridge, but down here in the valley, I can't see the beautiful sunsets and the double rainbows. My husband farmed up there, and when he retired, he kept on farming up there. Farmers seem to do that. 